Shabbat Shalom. All praises to the Most High and His Son, Yahweh Shai. All praises to the to, to the one third. Uh, you know, to the hopeful elect. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, we finna get into this Bible study tonight. So same thing like every day. Nothing changes, man. It's the same old, same old, same old mo, right? Yeah, it's a new day. Um, it's the same old, same old, man. Nothing changes, man. It's the same thing, man. Everybody trying to change it, change the, change the situation. You know what I'm saying? If the problem is, is that don't nobody want to be consistent. You know what I'm saying? And that's what we gotta learn. Is we have to learn discipline. You feel me? We gotta learn that consistency. You see what I'm saying? Because that's what we was when we was in Israel, right? We was a consistent people. We were, a, you know, a disciplined people. You follow what I'm saying? We were disciplined. You know, we were we were consistent. We were disciplined. You feel me? But you guys, y'all didn't read um, last night. We talked about um, Paul. That was a good message, man. Last last night, yesterday, man. Um, you missed that, man. I don't know what to tell you. Um, a lot of good nuggets, a lot of good information, a lot of good um, wisdom, biblical wisdom, right? A lot of good instruction, a lot of good understanding. Um. Like I say, you, you know, yesterday was awesome. We had a good time. So uh, we fit a dive into the next verse, uh, Romans chapter two, the next chapter. We fit a dive. We fit a dive into that as well, right? So um, we fit a get go ahead and start reading. Go ahead, uh, read Romans chapter two, verse one. This is the book of Romans chapter two, of verse one. Therefore, thou art inexcusable, O man, wheresoever thou art thy judges. For wherein thou judgest another, thou commandest thyself. For thou that judgest doesn't the same thing. We got a lot of things going on in Israel, right? Everybody out here judging somebody about something. You follow what I'm saying? We out here judging people about doctrines. We out here judging people about their a physical appearance. We're judging people about, you know, uh, you know, Flying saucers, right? We judging people, you know, about fringes. We judging people about um, a lot of different things, man. Right? But the problem is that we don't judge people based on the spirit. We always judge an outward appearance. But we don't judge people based on the spirit. You follow what I'm saying? So that's the thing about that. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Come on. <laughs> yeah, so we we don't judge people based on the spirit. We judge people based on the outward appearance. You follow what I'm saying? So, you know, we got to start judging people based on the spirit. We got to start judging people based on the, the inward man. You follow what I'm saying? Right? So it's inexcusable for you to be out here judging people based on appearance, based on the physical appearance. Right? It's inexcusable, man. Oh, man. Oh, woman. Right? Oh, man. Oh, woman. I'm talking about the man and the woman, right? Because it's inexcusable, man. Look at these relationships. All these relationships are destroyed because everybody judging each other in these relationships. But don't nobody want to look in the mirror, man. At all. You follow what I'm saying? Everybody judging, they, judging each other in these relationships because, you know, they, but they don't want to look in the mirror, man. Right? Kevin Samuels said it best. He said it's a 75% divorce rate, man. And you know who caused it? Who, who filed a divorce the first? Who, who be the first person to file that divorce? Right? Put it in the comments if you know who, who be the first person to, to file that, the 75% divorce rate in America. Right? It's a 75% divorce rate in America. And these women are the first ones to, 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 to file a divorce. You understand what I'm saying? These women be the first ones to, defile, to, 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 to file a divorce on you, man. But 
is it the woman fault? No, it's not the woman fault. It's the man fault because the man is the one that's supposed to be leading the house. The man is the one that's supposed to be leading the house. The man is the one that's supposed to be leading the woman in the Bible. Leading the woman in the scriptures. So it's the man fault that we got all these women out here that's running around and they out here just butt wild. You know, busting it down, right? Because we are the problem, man. We hurt these women, man. We hurt these women and now they just a bunch of hurt dogs. They just walking around, you know, and they just want to hurt everybody. You know, because they, 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 again, because they been hurt. A lot of these dudes cheated on them. And then, so now they out here hurting. Now they out here. And so you got to be the one to teach that woman to stay in the spirit. You got to be the one to teach that woman to keep the commandments. You got to be the one to teach that woman. So a lot of times, man, a lot of these dudes give up on their woman. A lot of times these dudes give up on their marriage. Right? A lot of times these dudes, they just don't want to take the responsibility for their marriage. Right? Because they carnal. But we're going to read, read verse 1 again real quick. Therefore, thou art inexcusable, O man, whoever so thou art that judges, for wherein thou judges another, thou condemnest thyself. When you judge another, you condemn yourself. Man. You don't even look in the mirror because you're always pointing the finger and we always... Looking at the the, the the moat and the smoke in everybody else's eye. We always looking at the moat in our brothers and our sisters' eyes. We never take out that moat out of our own eye. You see what I'm saying? Nobody ever want to take out the moat out of their own eye. You follow what I'm saying? Right? But it says, do condemnest thyself. For do that judges do is the same things. So a lot of brothers and sisters that judge, right? They do the same thing, man. You out here judging somebody for, you know, not wearing their fringes. And guess what? You don't wear your fringes either, bro. <laughs> you out here judging somebody for uh, not keeping the Sabbath, man. And you ain't even keeping the Sabbath yourself, bro. You, you, you out here judging somebody for being angry, man. But you ain't. You be angry you yourself. Right? You out here judging somebody for, 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 for you know, uh, you know, being in the Christianity church, man. But guess what? Even yourself is still in Christianity, man. Because look, a lot of people still corner, man. And you think just because you're getting on the Christians, you think you got a, 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 a safe spot in the kingdom of heaven? You think that you got a safe, uh, a, a safe, uh, you know, you made it because you came into the truth? See, that's the problem. A lot of people think just because they came into the truth, they made it. They, they done already made it. In their mind, they already became successful. Yeah. They've already. See, I'm telling you, man, it's deep. A lot of people come into this truth, and the first thing they think, man, I already made it. I already, I'm good. I can just talk about Christians all day. I can just talk about, you know, Edomites all day, right? I can just talk about. The 12 tribes charts all day, right? <laughs> <laughs> so that's what they do, man. They out here talking about the 12 tribes charts and stuff. Out here talking about the white man and don't even want to look in the mirror. That's crazy. Do condemns thyself. For do that judges, man, you do the same thing, man. You're not perfect in this walk yourself, man. You're not perfect in this walk yourself. Ain't nobody perfect in this walk. Everybody in this walk is doing something wrong. Everybody in this walk is doing something wrong. Everybody. So if you think that you got it all figured out, man, you think you got 100% of the truth, you think that you got it all figured out, right? You want to be partial, right? You want to you wanna be selective because a lot of people are selective. A lot of people are partial, you know? They like they only like this group. They only like this camp, right? They only like this person, right? They only like this person. You feel me, right? Get a put a one in the comments if you understand what I'm saying. It's always somebody that just like certain people. You want to be selective. Oh, he got a lot of money, so I like this man. Oh, I like this woman. She got a lot of money, right? 
See what I'm saying? Oh, you know, this person is in the camp. So I like this man. I like this woman because this person in the camp. This person is in this particular camp. You see what I'm saying? This particular congregation. Because you don't, oh, you don't go to T.D. Jakes. So I don't like you. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, you don't go to Joe Osteen. So I don't like you. Oh, right. So you, you, you don't, you don't, uh, you, you know, you guys don't have the, the, the fruit of the spirits. So I don't like you. Right. See, that's what they do. They find who they want to find in this truth and who they want to, they, who they want to flock to. You see what I'm saying? That's what spirits do. Right. That's what these spirits do. These spirits go who, where they supposed to go. Right. They go. Spirits go where they are compatible with. Wherever you compatible, that's where you gonna go. You see what I'm saying? If you compatible to the customs of the white man, you gonna be you gonna like the white man more than the black man. You see what I'm saying? If you compatible with the black man, you gonna be you gonna go to the black man more than the white man. You see what I'm saying? So it's always about the compatibility. It's always about how partial you are. You always judging people. Based on appearance, based on the flesh, but it's time out for all of that, man. We gotta stop. We gotta stop. You know, uh, uh, judging people based on the flesh. We gotta start judging people based on the spirit. Bring it out. We gotta start judging people based on the spirit, not according to what you're doing on the outward appearance, but what you're doing according to the inward appearance, right? That's what you judge. Right. So when you say, you know, when you have somebody that's keeping the commandments and they walking in the faith of Christ, then that's somebody I want to talk to. But if you got somebody that's not keeping the commandments and not keeping the faith of Christ, then that's not somebody I want to talk to because it's a spiritual walk. You follow what I'm saying? Read verse two. The book of Romans, chapter two, and verse two. But we are sure that the judgments of God is according to the truth against them. Which commit such things. See, the judgment of God. See, you got to understand, everybody has a judgment. A judgment of man, right? A lot of people don't have a judgment of God. You see what I'm saying? They're not going off. Their judgment is not based on God. It's not based on the spirit. You follow what I'm saying? It's based on man. It's based on flesh. It's based on the physical, right? It's based on carnality, right? Your judgment is supposed to be a righteous judgment. Right? It's supposed to be a spiritual righteous judgment, right? And so that's the problem, man. No, nobody want to have a spiritual righteous judgment. You follow what I'm saying? So, but we are sure that the judgment of God, see, because God, God is going to be the one that eventually judge you. You follow what I'm saying? God is going to be the one that eventually judge you, right? The judgment of God is according to the truth. See, God, man, he's according to the truth, man. He's according to the heart. Right? He's not according to the, to the physical. He's according to the heart. Against them which commit such things. You follow what I'm saying? Because them that are hypocrites. Right? Them that are always judging but don't want to judge themselves. You see what I'm saying? And it's a lot of brothers and sisters like this. Right? They always judging somebody else. But they don't want to look in that mirror, man. Right? So we have to get out of that mindset. We have to get out of that mindset of judging other people and not judging ourselves. Let's read verse 3. Book of Romans, chapter 2, verse 3. Uh-huh. Read that. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judges them which do such things, right. and doeth the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? See, you think that you, because you, you think you're going to, you think you're going to, you're going to escape the judgment of God? You think you're going to escape the judgment of God if you out here judging other people and you're not looking in the mirror yourself? Right? You got a lot of people that do these such things, right? They always judging other people, but they not looking in that mirror. You see what I'm saying? And so that's what's going on, man. You know, you got a lot of brothers and sisters out here that be judging other people, but they not looking in that mirror. And it's sad. It is very sad that we have to deal with these type of people, man. Right? And we always dealing with these type of people that's always judging, you know, on the outward appearance. And they always judging you, but they don't want to look in the mirror. Man, that is, that, that's sad, man. Right? And think it through this. 
Oh man, that do judges which do such things and do it the same, that do shall escape the judgment of God. Mm -hmm. Right? So you're not going to escape the judgment of God. If you out here judging other people and you're not judging yourself, and you know it's crazy because a lot of these corner Israelite camp do this all the time. They always judging the white man. They always talking about the Edomites, but they never talk about themselves. <laughs> they always judging. They always judging other people. They always judging the Christians, but they never talk about themselves. Man, they got a high judgment in them in 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 in, in uh, with God. Man, they got a high judgment with God. That through it, it shall escape the judgment of God. Right? Verse four says what? Or despise it thou that the, riches, the riches of his, goodness mm -hmm. and forbiddance and long suffering and not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to recompense. Right. So or despise it through the riches of his goodness, right? And forbearance. Right? See, a lot of people, man, they judging people, man, and they despising the richness of his goodness and his forbearance. See, because you out here judging people, but you're not, you're not really looking at the, 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 the richness of his mercy. You're not looking at the richness of his forbearance, of his goodness. Because you're so focused on negativity. You're so focused on, you so focused on the, the, the richness of his of his of his of his evil stuff, right? All the evil things that he do. Man. See, you got a lot of Israelite camps out here. All they pushing is World War Three, World War Three, World War Three, World War Three. They always pushing this World War Three mentality, man. They always out here scaring people with World War Three instead of focusing on the goodness of his mercy, man. Instead of focusing on the goodness and the forbearance and the long suffering that he gave all Israel. He gave all Israel the goodness and the forbearance and the in the in the long suffering about all these. You know how many people out here, man, and already committed. You know how many all these people, billions of Israelites, done died over twenty five hundred years, done died, right? And 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 the Most High had mercy on these people, man. The Most High still had goodness and mercy on these people and love for these people, man. You see what I'm saying? And so. How much more? So you mean to tell me you can't have no mercy and goodness and 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 and, and uh you know in long suffering with your brothers and sisters? You know, a lot of these people got short fuses, man. They ready to, you know, they don't even want to uh they don't even want to long suffer with their brothers and sisters in the scriptures, mm -hmm. right? They always sitting here getting mad. As soon as you bring out a doctrine, as soon as you bring out a scripture, they don't even want to long suffer, man. They just want to hit you with that 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 no mercy. Right? They want to hit you with no mercy. They don't even have no mercy at all. You see what I'm saying? They only they only deal with you for like a short period of time. Right? You got to be dealing with people for a long period of time. You got to deal with people because look, it could take it's going to take a lot of people two to three years before they finally come into the spirit of Christ. Ooh. It could take five, six years before somebody come into the spirit of Christ. So just because I'm telling you this right now does not mean you're going to receive this right now. This might take five years. This might take six years, right? For women, you're looking at six years. For men, you're looking at about three years, right? So you got to understand that you have to be patient with your brothers and sisters, man. Mm -hmm. And even then, you still have to hope that the Most High bless you with that level of wisdom and understanding. Then you got to make sure that the Most High going to bless you with that level of wisdom and understanding. You follow what I'm saying? So you got to understand that you have to be very patient with your brothers and sisters. Instead of judging them so quickly, you have to be very, very patient and long-suffering and full of richness of goodness and of forbearance. Just like the Most High is with you. You see what I'm saying? Not knowing that the goodness of God leaded thee to repentance. That's how you're going to lead somebody to repentance. That's how you're going to lead somebody to repentance. You have to work out. You got to help them work out that salvation. You got you to gotta be that long-suffering brother and sister in this truth. You got to show love. Mm. You got to show love. You got to be able to, to deal with these, these coconuts. Right? Because there's a lot of coconut brothers and sisters in the truth, right? 
right? It's a lot of coconuts, man. You got it sometimes, man. They they stubborn, you know. They stubborn, and I get that. You know, they <laughs> they they stiff neck, man. They sottish. You know what I'm saying? They just don't get it. They don't want to receive the spirit, right? They despise the goodness of God. Right? When you come off real good to somebody, even in the world, when you come off real good to somebody, you know that they flee. They flee away from you. Right? Because when you come off that good to people, man, people get scared in this day and time. Because they're like, damn, you too good. You see what I'm saying? Like, damn, you damn, you might be a little too good, bro. You ain't never cheated on me. What's up? You see what I'm saying? You might be a little too good. Because a lot of people haven't, they don't, they don't understand the goodness and the richness of God, right? Because when you good to a woman, when you good to a man in a relationship, in a marriage, a lot of times, man, you be scared. You be thinking that that person done cheated on you, man. You like, damn, you be looking behind your back, man. Word. You see what I'm saying? Because you don't understand the goodness and the forbearance and the long suffering of God. I'm telling you, man, that's what's going on. A lot of people full of insecurity. A lot of people full of anxiety. You see what I'm saying? So they be scared, man. They be like, dang. I don't know, man. I don't know. This woman here, man, she too good. Man, this man here, man. Oh, man, this man here too good. You see what I'm saying? And then they lose a good thing because they done, they done, they learn toxicity all their life. All you know is hate. All you know is hate, man. And so, put a one in the comments if you understand what I'm saying. Look, all you know is hate. You've been born in hate all your life. You've been born in hate all your life, man. You see what I'm saying? Your mama was hating on you. Your daddy was hating on you. Your sisters was hating on you. Your brother was hating on you. Right? Everybody was hating on you, man. You see what I'm saying? Your relationship, your girlfriend was hating on you. You see what I'm saying? Your boyfriend was hating on you. You see what I'm saying? So you don't know what is good. You don't know what is peaceful, right? Because you've been born in this wickedness. You've been born in evil. You've been born in negativity. You've been born in toxicity. You see what I'm saying? So when it comes to this goodness and this richness, in this, in this faith, in the spirit of Christ, in the long suffering, right? You don't understand that, right? This is a microwave society. You see what I'm saying? The first thing we do is put that food in the microwave. You see what I'm saying? The first thing we want to do is get a hurry up and get a boyfriend. Hurry up and get a girlfriend. Hurry up. We, we impatient. You follow what I'm saying? This is a microwave instant gratification society. Right? This is a grat instant gratification society. Everybody want it now, now, now. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Right? And so that's what's going on. And everybody think they got options. Right? Mm -hmm. Everybody think they got options, man. You got Everybody think they got uh, the, next, the next best thing going on. You see what I'm saying? Oh, I can get this next girl. I can get this next girlfriend. I can get this next boyfriend. Right? I can get this next girl. Right? It's always trying to, that next best idea, that next best thing. And that's what's keeping you, that's what's keeping you constantly in this curse, man. You follow what I'm saying? Right? So not knowing that the goodness, the mercy, the faith, the spirit of Christ, right? The goodness of God lead it to repentance. So how are you going to get repentance if you're not being, you know, patient, how you going to get repentance if you're not being patient? How you going to get repentance if you're not being patient with your spouse? How you going to how you going to get repentance if you're not being patient with God? How you how you going to get in the spirit of Christ if you're not being patient with your brothers and sisters? You see what I'm saying? God's patient with us. God patient with us. He's been patient with us for over 500 years. 22500 years, 3000 years, right? Forever, right? God has always been patient. But nobody wants to practice the patience of God. Right? So that's what's going on, man. We got a sister. She brought out Sirach chapter 6, verse 7. Right? So let's get that. Sirach chapter 6, verse 7. Let's see what that's talking about. It says, If dude wouldest get a friend, prove him first, and be not hasty to credit him. Absolutely. See, that's the problem, man. We always hasty to credit our friends. 
We always hasty to credit everybody. We have to prove all things in this walk. We have to prove all things. You see what I'm saying? And that's the problem. Ain't nobody proving they brothers and sisters, man. They not proving to make sure that they are of God. You follow what I'm saying? And then that's why you end up in the wrong relationship. That's why you end up in the wrong marriage. That's why you end up in the wrong situation. You see what I'm saying? Because you're not proving things first. You're not proving. You're not holding yourself accountable. Right? To God. You follow what I'm saying? Verse 5, it says, But after thy hardness in, in, in penitent heart, right? Treasure it up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath in the revelation of righteousness, judgment of God, man. Because after thy hardness, see, you got a hard heart. In an impenitent heart, a stony heart. You see what I'm saying? And you treasure up unto thyself wrath, man. You see what I'm saying? So you got to put away that stony heart. Because mm -hmm. you're treasuring up a lot of anger. You're treasuring up a lot of uh, uh, animosity. You're treasuring up a lot of toxicity. You got to put away that wrath against the day. Because look, what's going to happen, right? Is it treasure it up unto the thyself wrath against the day of wrath? In the revelation of the righteous judgment of God, because if you got that wrath inside of you, if you got that 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 that, that, that hatred in you towards your brothers and sisters, then the Most High gonna have that same wrath for you, man. He gonna have that same wrath for you, just like you have the same wrath for your brothers and sisters, man. You see what I'm saying? So the same wrath that you have for your brothers and sisters is going to be the same wrath that you have, that God have for you. Man. It's just like Esau. You see what I'm saying? Just like these Edomites, right? When you had that wrath for these Edomites, and you had that wrath for these Christians, you see what I'm saying? Then God going to have that wrath for you because you're judging these brothers and sisters and you're not looking in the mirror, right? Because you was once a Christian. You was once a Muslim. You was once a a a a a a a, a, a Edomite in the mind, or is a, a Esau in the mind, right? Because they institutionalized you. They indoctrinated you. You follow what I'm saying? So you was once these things too, right? So you gotta have a little bit more patience. You gotta have a little bit more goodness. You follow what I'm saying? So let's read verse six real quick. This is the book of Romans chapter 2 and verse 6. Who will render to every man according to his deeds? God is going to render every man according to the deeds that you, com that you committed on this earth. Every deed that you committed on this earth, every deed that you committed is going to be rendered back to you. Every deed, every work that you've done on this earth is going to be rendered back to you. Verse 7 says, to, do, to them who by patience, continuance in well-doing seek for glory and honor, right? So if you, you know, it says to them who are patient by continuing in well-doing, man. If you patient, right? Like we just got to talk about, you have to be patient. You have to be continue in well-doing, seeking for glory. You're supposed to be seeking the glory of God, man, and honor, Right? The honor of God and immortality. The immortality of God. Right? And eternal life. We're supposed to be trying to seek the immortality of God. We're supposed to be seeking the, the spiritual, the invincible immortality of God. We're supposed to be immortal. We're supposed to be immortal. Immortality. That means we're supposed to be, uh, 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 you know, increasing the wisdom of God. More like the prophet, you know, our prophet. Eternal life. Yeah. That is the eternal life that we're supposed to be seeking out here, man. Right? Like the prophets. The prophets are eternal. Right? Like 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 Moses, right? Like 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 uh Solomon, right? Like Matthew, like John, like Christ, like Jonah, right? Like Ruth, right? All these people in the Bible that were immortal. You see what I'm saying? Still talking about it to this day. We still talking about these brothers and sisters to this day. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? Let's read verse 8. Book of Romans chapter 2 and verse 8. But 
unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obeys unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. A lot of people don't obey this truth. You see what I'm saying? Everybody that's thinking they in the truth, they not in the truth. Right? Because you think you obey in the truth and you're really not. You see what I'm saying? A lot of people not really obeying the truth of God. What is the truth? Right? What is the truth of God? What is truly the truth of God? You see what I'm saying? Because a lot of times we obey the truth of man. We obey the truth of the flesh. We obey the truth of the of the blood. You see what I'm saying? We're not obeying the truth of God. Does that make sense? Right? You can call yourself an Israelite. You can come in the truth, quote unquote. But then that don't mean that you actually obeying the truth. Man. That don't mean you're obeying God. Just because you call yourself an Israelite doesn't mean that you're walking like God. Walking in the scriptures. So everybody in the truth is not obeying the truth, right? They're being contentious, right? Let's get the uh, definition on uh, contentious real quick. Let's get the definition on that, right? Because that's what's going on. A lot of brothers and sisters are being contentious, right? Let's get it, contentious. Causing or likely to cause an argument, controversial. A lot of people are being controversial in this truth. You see what I'm saying? They want to argue all the time instead of just listening. They want to argue. They want to be contentious. You follow what I'm saying? They don't want to learn the Bible. They don't want to teach the Bible the right way. Right? So that's what's going on. A lot of brothers and sisters are being contentious. Right? They don't obey the truth. You tell them the truth and then they want to fight you. They want to, they want to disobey. Right? Just like right now, we were just talking about how you know, the Israelite, if you want to be a full breed Israelite, you have to have the father and the mother. But you have brothers and sisters out here that are contentious. They want to argue with you and tell you that, you know, uh, that it's just based on the father. Right. But if it's just based on the father, then that means that you're excluding the mother. Right. And that means that you have some type of self-hatred for the mother and your mother, because your mother probably is black. Or quote unquote Israelite, because black, that's not what it is. She's probably brown, whatever, brunette. But the point is, is that if you don't like that the Israelites are supposed to stay within their tribe, then that means you have some type of self hatred for yourself and for <laughs> your women, right? Uh, and I understand a lot of these women have done you wrong, but at the end of the day, you have to understand that these women are our is our is our kindred you follow what i'm saying these women are our kindred right so we have to understand that and we have to start embracing that right but obey unrighteousness man just because you in this truth does not mean that you're obeying the righteousness of god because what is the righteousness of God? The righteousness, we just talked about yesterday. The righteousness of God is obeying the, the, the righteousness of God is the faith of Christ, is the spirit of Christ. That is the righteousness of God. Indignation in wrath. See, you're, they, but they obey unrighteousness, man. A lot of people obey unrighteousness, man. They, they don't really obey righteousness. You see what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? A lot of people want to disagree with you. A lot of people want to mock and scope. A lot of people want to afflict you because they don't obey righteousness. They don't obey unrighteousness. Man, I've seen so many people that will get on my case, but then they'll turn around and then they'll praise some wicked person that's not even keeping the commandments. You see what I'm saying? They obey, they obey unrighteousness. They don't obey righteousness. You see what I'm saying? They're going to have something to say about this lie. They're going to have something to say about this video, but they ain't going to have nothing to say about all of them strip clubs that they done been to. Mm. You see what I'm saying? They, gonna, they don't obey righteousness. They obey the unrighteousness, the indignation, and wrath, tribulation, and anguish 
upon every soul of man that doeth evil. See, a lot of people, man, they call evil good and good evil, man. Everyone that's out here that's doing evil, man, and they, they looking at the good as evil. You see what I'm saying? They don't look, they not looking at the, the, the good as good. They looking at the good as evil. Right? Well, it says, what is it say? Woe to them they call good evil and evil good. Woe, man. Woe, 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 woe. Woe Whoa. Whoa to them that call evil good and good evil, man. Upon every soul of man that doeth evil, man. Right? And of the Jew first, it says of the Jew first, right? So of the Jew first and also the Gentile. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good. To the Jew first and also to the to the Gentile, man. See, you're going to have peace. You're going to have honor. Everybody that's doing good, everybody that's doing good according to God, they're going to have honor and peace. To every man and woman that worketh good, to the Jews and to the Gentiles, man, you're going to have peace and honor with God, man. Right? Read verse 11. The book of Romans, chapter 2, verse 11. For there is no recompense, respect, respect for a person with God. For there is no respect with God. There is no respect of persons with God. With Yahweh, there is no respect of persons, man. Right? So you got a lot of brothers and sisters, man. They out here being partial. You see what I'm saying? They have a, they don't, they don't, they don't, they have respect for other people. They have respect for all these other brothers and sisters in the truth. You see what I'm saying? But they don't have no respect for some people that they don't like. You see what I'm saying? Instead of having respect for all, you see what I'm saying? No respect for all people. You see what I'm saying? Meaning, you're supposed to not be partial. You're not supposed to prejudge. You see what I'm saying? Based on the physical. You see what I'm saying? A lot of people, they, they, they prejudge. They, they prejudge you based on, they, they count you out. They count you out, you know, because of whatever. So we have to start counting each other out. We have to, for there is no respect of persons with God. You follow what I'm saying? Put a one in the comments if you follow what I'm saying. There is no respect of persons with God. But you got a lot of brothers and sisters, they have respect of persons. You see what I'm saying? Oh, I like this camp over here. I like that camp over here. I only respect this camp. I don't respect all these other camps. You follow what I'm saying? So we don't supposed to have no respect of persons when it comes to God. Right? So if a camp is going off and you know that person is going off, if you know that camp is going off in the doctrine, then you supposed to you supposed to rebuke that camp. You supposed to rebuke that camp that's going off and get them back in the faith. You see what I'm saying? I don't have no respect to person. I don't care if you got a big camp, small camp, purple camp, yellow camp. Cause it's not about the camp. <laughs> it's about the the it's about God. It's about Yahweh. And Yahweh Shah. So there is no respect to persons with God. Read on, verse 12. Verse 12. For as many as have sinned without the law shall also perish without the law. And many. as many uh -huh. as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. For as many have sinned without the law. Right? So if you without the law, you're going to be judged without the law. You're still getting judged. By the law, whether you are with or without the law, you're still getting judged. Whether you are with or without the law, you are still getting judged. If you're not in the truth, as a Christian, you're still getting judged by the law. You might perish without the law, but you're still going to get judged by the law. And as many have sinned in the law, shall be judged by the law. Mm -hmm. So everybody that sinned in the law going to be judged by the law as well. So there's no respect to persons with God. It's a straight across the board. If you're not in the truth, you get judged by the law. If you're in the truth, you get judged by the law. See how God is equal? You see how God is just? You see how God is righteous? You see how God is merciful? 
You see how God is good? You see that? It's about that. It's about being good, man. It's about being. It, you see how God has love for you? Because he's he's showing you that he's going to judge you by the law all the time. It's a blood in, blood out covenant. It's a blood in, blood out covenant. Right? It's a blood in, blood out covenant. Right? Read verse 13. Verse 13. For not that the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. See, it's not the hearers of the law that are just before God. Because there's a lot of people that are hear the law and they won't do the law. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So then you got the ones that actually do the law. They hear the law and do the law. Right? So the ones that are just. Because remember what it say. Do not condemn the just. Right? They both are an abomination. You condemn the wicked and the just. They both are an abomination. But how do you know somebody is just? Because they keeping the law. But how do you know they're keeping the law? By the Spirit of God. Because if you're not, if you're not, you're not really keeping the law if you don't have the Spirit of God. If you're not really keeping the law if your heart is not circumcised. You're not really keeping the law. You're keeping the law hourly, but you're not keeping the law spiritually. You follow what I'm saying? So you're really not keeping the law if you're not, you're not using the spirit of Christ to fulfill that law. If, you don't, if you're not working on your heart. If you're not working on your mind. If you're not working on your lips. If you're not working on your eyes. If you're not working on your ears. Right? If you're not being circumcised in your heart. Then you're not keeping the law. You follow what I'm saying? So you might think you're keeping the law. But if you still got a stony heart. Then you're not keeping the law. So, for the, not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Are you really keeping the law? How many people on this line right now keeping all 613 laws right now? And how many people on this line right now have read all five books of Moses? How many people? Put a one in the comments. How many people in the comments, put, put it in the comments right now. How many people have read all five books of Moses? I'll wait. Waiting on that one in the comments. How many people have read all five books of Moses? Deuteronomy, Genesis, Leviticus, Numbers, and Exodus. How many people have read Genesis, Deuteronomy, Genesis, Deuteronomy, Leviticus, Exodus, and Numbers? How many people are keeping the law? Exactly. You can't keep the law if you don't love your brother. Exactly. You cannot keep the law if you are, if you are carnally minded. <laughs> you cannot keep the law at all. You can try to keep the law, but you ain't, you're going to fail. Every time, if you do not love your brother, come. If you do not love your brother, right? Then you're not keeping the law. Right? And who is... Because if you love your brother, then you're going to fulfill the entire law. You're going to fulfill the entire law of Moses. If you love your brother. And if you love God with all thine heart and with all thy mind and with all thine soul. There are only two laws. <laughs> because didn't nobody put a, to the, a one in the comments yet. How many people read the five books of Moses? Genesis, Leviticus, Exodus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. How many people? I'm away. You see what I'm talking about? Ain't nobody reading the first five books of Moses. And they saying they circumcised. And they saying they keeping the commandments. Nobody has read the first five books of Moses. If you have not read the first five books of Moses, you are not circumcised by the law of Moses. You are not. See, that's the thing. Nobody's looking in the mirror. Right? If you have not kept, the, if you're not reading the five books of Moses, if you have not read them all yet, you are not circumcised. You're still a Gentile. 
Man. You still a Greek. You still the Edomite. The ones you hate on the street. So bad. But yet you have not read the five books of Moses. You see what I'm saying? So if you haven't read the first five books of Moses, you need to go ahead and do that so you can be circumcised by the law of Moses. Because we haven't even gotten to the law of Christ yet. So you got a long way to go. Because the law of Christ is more is actually it's a lot more in depth. Because it's it, you gotta understand the law of Christ, you can't see the law of Christ. See, Moses, you can see the law of Moses because it was written in graven and images. It was written in graven and stone. Right? So how much more can you see the law of Christ? Man, if you can't see the law of Moses, you're not going to see the law of Christ. That's just bottom line. A lot of people think they see the law of Christ, but they don't because they don't understand the law of Moses. You have to understand the law of Moses in order to understand the law of Christ. You follow what I'm saying? You have to be baptized with water. And then you have to be you have to be baptized with fire. And a lot of people haven't been baptized with water yet, man. You follow what I'm saying? So it says, verse 14, for when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves. So when the Gentiles, which have not the law, see, because if you have not the law, you follow what I'm saying? Do by nature the things contained in the law, right? These having not the law, right, are a law unto themselves. So you got to understand which what it says, which show the work of law written in your hearts, their conscience also bearing witness and their thought that the, the meanwhile accusing or else accusing, excusing one another. Right, so we show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience, also bearing witness in their thoughts, the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. So in the day when God judged the streets of men by Yahweh Shah, according to my gospel, right? Behold, do art cause a Jew and retest in the law and makest thyself boast of God and knowest his will and approvest the things that are more excellent being instructed out of the law and are confident that through thyself are a God of, of blind, a light of them which are in darkness an instructor of the foolish, right? So you are an instructor of the foolish, right? And it says, teaching do not thyself. See, it says right here, it says a teacher of babes. See, a lot of times, man, you are a teacher of babes, man, which has the form of knowledge and in the truth, in of the truth in the law, right? So you still a form of base, man, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of base, which has the form of knowledge and the truth in the law. Do therefore which teacheth another, teach it, do not thyself. Man, because you can be out here teaching another person, but you're not teaching yourself. You got a whole law that you learn, the law of Moses, but you teaching everybody to keep the commandments, but you're not teaching yourself to keep the commandments. Man, do that preaches a man should not steal. Do, do steal, right? So do you steal? You teach a man not to steal, but do you steal? You teach a woman not to steal, but do she steal? Do you steal? Ain't nobody thinking about that. Do that it says a man could not commit adultery. Do set do does do commit adultery? Man. See, a lot of brothers and sisters out here saying that a man cannot commit adultery. You got brothers and sisters out you got brothers out here that think that a man cannot actually commit adultery. A man can commit adultery. Right? Does do commit adultery? Right? So you out here telling men that they should not commit adultery. But then you turn around and commit adultery. Right? Dude says a man should not commit adultery. Do you commit adultery? Do you steal? 
Do you do you worship idols? Are you in witchcraft? Are you still talking about chariots in the sky? Are you still talking about walk, Christ walking on water physically? That's witchcraft. Right? But you teach the law. You teach the commandments, but you still tell the people that, they, that Christ walked on water. You still tell the people that Jonah got ate by a whale. You still tell the people that, 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 uh, that Christ fed, you know, 5,000 with two fish. That's witchcraft. But you teaching people not to be in witchcraft, but you still in witchcraft? Mm. Think about that. You teaching the Christians to get out of witchcraft. You teaching all these Christians to get out of witchcraft. You telling them to stop worshiping horoscopes, to stop worshiping zodiac signs. But you are worshiping witchcraft. It's yourself. Because you are teaching your congregation to commit witchcraft. You're teaching them to turn into Super Saiyan Goku. <laughs> right? You're teaching them to look in the sky for chariots. You're teaching them that Christ walked on water. You're teaching them that Moses split two big bodies of water. But you yourself is in witchcraft, but you're trying to tell somebody else that to, to, to not be in witchcraft? Man, they don't understand. Dude says a man should not have committed adultery. Do you commit adultery? Do you commit adultery? Dudes that abhors idols do do commit sacrilegious. So a lot of times, are you not in idolatry? Worshiping chariots? <laughs> Worshiping man? You got Ildris Eldris as Yahweh Shah. Are you IC? Are you IC? You know, if you got Ildris Ildris as I, 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 uh, Yahweh Shah, that's idolatry. So if you telling somebody to be out there, I die, you telling them to keep the commandment, but you out here breaking the commandments because Ildris Ildris is idolatry. Right? So how are you keeping the commandments when you telling somebody else to not keep, to keep the commandment, but then you turn around and you're not keeping the commandments? Amen. You follow what I'm saying? Verse 23. Romans chapter 2, verse 23. It says, do that make is thy boast of the law. See, a lot of people boast of the law. Man, you make it yourself boast of the law. Through breaking the law, dishonor it through God. Right? Do you honor God? Do you dishonor your God when you break it the law? But you make it like like yourself both of the law through begging the law, do the, the law dishonor it your God, right? You dishonor your God when you break the law, and don't even know it. So you out here judging other people for breaking the law, right? For the name of Yahweh is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you. So the name of God, the name of Yahweh is blasphemed through you. Wow. And that what sin can't be forgiven. <laughs> Blasphemy. Yep. You are here teaching the sheep to blaspheme against God because now you got everybody else condemning the Christians. Now you got everybody else Condemning the Edomites. Condemning the, 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 the 12 tribes chart. Right? You got everybody else doing that. And so now, everybody on your congregation is wicked. Because you created this false imagination. You created this vain imagination. You created idolatry. You created witchcraft in your congregation. And you telling everybody to keep the law, but you're not keeping it yourself. You breaking the law. For the name of Yahweh is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you. As it is written, for circumcision verily profited. Circumcision verily profited. If you keep the law, <laughs> but you're not keeping it. It only profits if you're keeping it. 
But a lot of brothers and sisters not even keeping the law, man, because they don't even know the first five books of Moses. But if do be the breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. So your circumcision of the law is made uncircumcision and when you break the law. So now you really are uncircumcised Israelite because you was keeping the law, but then you started breaking the law. Right? Because you're teaching your camp leaders to uh, worship chariots. Right? Christ walked on water. You got people out here out here pushing on Instagram. You got brothers and sisters out here right now that are pushing around, throwing, you know, sending, sharing memes of uh, of, of Christ feeding five thousand fish with five thousand people with two fish. How they get like that? A camp leader, some camp leader done taught them to push this stuff, man. Somebody, a leader, a leader in in Israel has taught. Another brother or sister to push these false doctrines. And so now these Gentiles are blaspheming against God and they don't even know it because they've been listening to the people that's supposed to be helping them. And giving them the real word of God. But these people are actually giving them the wrong word of God, man. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keepeth the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? Right? And shall not the uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge thee, who by the letter in circumcision does transgress the law? Right? So it shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge thee, who by the letter in circumcision does transgress the law, right? Because verse 8, what does it say? For he is not a Jew, which is one in, which is one outwardly. Because you are not a Jew if you are a Jew outwardly. Mm. Neither is the circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. So the circumcision is not outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, inwardly, inwardly. In the circumcision is that of the heart. The circumcision is that of the heart. Because you could be keeping the laws all day long. You could be keeping the laws of God all day long. The, the law of Moses. You could be circumcised by the law of Moses. But your, law, your circumcision can be uncircumcision just as quick as you just got circumcised. Because you can be out here condemning the wrong people because you have respect of persons. You see what I'm saying? So you can be out here being partial in condemning the wrong person based on the physical. You see what I'm saying? Because look, if I look at a brother right now and he might look Hispanic and I look at a brother that looks just like me, black. But the Hispanic brother is receiving the spirit of Christ. And the black brother is not. So do we go based on the law? Right? So that's the question. Do we go based on the law? If a, if a Hispanic person is receiving the spirit of Christ, if a Hispanic person that is mixed breed, if that person is receiving the spirit of Christ, if that person is receiving the circumcision of Moses as well as the new doctrine, the, 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 the doctrine of Christ, right? But then you got a brother that look like you and he not receiving the doctrine of Christ. He's not receiving the spirit, right? He's not receiving the, the, the circumcision of Moses. Which one would you go with? Right? Put it in the comments. Which one would you go with? Which one would you go with? Would you go with the Hispanic brother or would you go with the brother that look like you? You see what I'm saying? So I that's what Paul was saying. Paul was saying, look, I don't care whether you a Gentile or a Jew. I don't care if you a Jew or a Greek. All I care about is are you receiving the spirit? Are you receiving the new song? That's what I care about. Because if you deny the new song, if you deny the son, because we are also the sons. 
Christ is not the only son, okay? Because if you read Old Testament, it says, Israel is my son. Israel is my firstborn. So if you deny the son, then how you gonna how you gonna get to the father? You see what I'm saying? So if you're not receiving the son, if you're not receiving the spirit of Christ that's in that son, then how are you going to receive the father? You see what I'm saying? So you got a lot of brothers and sisters that they not receiving the son. They're not receiving the spirit of Christ. They're not receiving the son. You see what I'm saying? Because they outward Jews. They don't even know the son is here. The son is here right now. Christ is here on the scene right now. And don't nobody even know. That's crazy. Because they not receiving the son. If you're not receiving the son, then you're not going to understand who's Christ. Today. You see what I'm saying? If you don't receive the son, then you're not going to receive the, the, the father. That's what Christ is trying to tell you. If you don't receive him, the son that he sent, God, Yahweh sent, Yahweh shot, the son, then how are you going to receive the son, the father? You're not going to receive the father without the son. Because if you hate the son, then you hate the father. If you, hate, if you love the son, then you love the father. One and one. Because they are one. You see what I'm saying? They are one. They are one. One flesh. Yahweh and Yahweh Shah are one. Right? They are equally yoked. For he is not a Jew. She is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. Your circumcision is not just based on the law of Moses. Your circumcision is also based on the law of Christ, which is of the heart. Because it's not just the outward in the flesh anymore. It is the inward in the spirit. It is the inward in the spirit. But he is a Jew. She is a Jew. Not by blood. Not by the will of man. Not by yourself. Right? But by the will of God. So which is outward in the flesh? Just because you keep in the law does not mean that you have the spirit of Christ. That you're receiving the son. That you're listening to the true Christ. That you're listening to the one, the real Christ. Because there are a lot of false Christ. There are a lot of false sons. And so you have to find the real son. The one that's today. The real son today. Because you got a lot of brothers and sisters out here looking at the wrong son. They looking at the, they trying to find the wrong, they out here listening to the wrong son. The wrong Christ. Some of these camps are not the Christ. Let's get that scripture real quick. Right? You got to understand. They are not the spirit. They are not the Christ. Everybody is not the Christ. You understand me? It's a lot of false prophets, man. So let's get the scripture on that. Uh, let's look at uh, get some. It's a bunch of them. <clears throat> let's get Galatians chapter two, verse twenty. Galatians chapter two, verse twenty. Let's get a precept on this. No. I do not. We keep the laws of Moses and the law of Christ. No, we don't have a religion. We have a nationality. The Bible is our nationality. The Bible is our, our history book. 
So the Bible is your history book. You are an Israelite, according to the Bible. Well, I got, I got, I got, I got. I don't know yet. I gotta uh, prove you first to see if you're an Israelite, because you could be looking like an Israelite, but you might be something else, according to your nationality. So um, I'm, I go based off the spirit. I don't go based off the physical, right? So you might look, you might look like an Israelite, but if I if I start talking to you and I start helping you and everything and start teaching you the Bible and preaching, you know, preaching to you and then you don't receive it, then you might be an Edomite in the spirit. So your nationality might be Edomite, not na Israelite. So, I mean, that's that's how that go. Right. So, you know, if you don't if you're not understanding the song, then you might not be an Israelite. If you're not hearing the song, if you're not receiving the song, then you might not be an Israelite. They're just following on. And it's okay, man. Like, you know, you you just not, you know, an Israelite. That's fine. It's okay. Um, but if you please to dwell here and you want to learn and you want to figure this thing out, stay right here and uh, get the word, man. We're going to be doing this every day, seven to nine. Exactly. It's based off if they understand the doctrine, the true doctrine of Christ. Mm -hmm. Because everybody's not on the same doctrine. Everybody's not on the same, the real doctrine. Because there's a lot of false Christ. And that's what we're digging into right now. Let's get Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Let's put that in the comments. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Because there is a lot of false prophets and a lot of false Christ out here today. And you have to be able to identify these brothers. Read that. This is the book of Galatians, chapter 2, and verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Mm -hmm. And that the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God, who, lived, who loved me and gave himself for me. See, Christ gave himself for you, right? Christ gave himself for you. Christ liveth within you. So if you are an inward Jew, you're going to be looking within. If you are an outward Jew, you're going to be looking without. You're going to be looking out, outwardly. You see what I'm saying? You're not going to be thinking that your brother is, has the spirit of Christ. You're not going to be thinking like that. You're going to be thinking that this Christ is coming down from the sky. And you see what I'm saying? And that's how you know the difference between a carnal Israelite and a spiritual Israelite. Because if you're not understanding that your brother can receive the spirit of Christ, right? And that Christ live it within your brothers and sisters, then you, that's where you're falling off. And that's where you're not understanding the spirit, the son of God, right? So Christ is you. You are the Christ. You are the Christ. You, you are the Christ. If you want to be. That's if, big if. You want to be the Christ, <laughs> which that means you would have to receive Christ. But that goes back to let's get John uh, chapter one, verse 20. Let's read that and we're going to read on down. This is the book of John chapter one and verse 20. OK, read that. And he confessed and denied not. Mm hmm. But confess, I am not the Christ. John said, I am not the Christ. I am not the Christ. I'm telling you the same thing right now. I am not the Christ. You see how I just told you that? I am not the Christ. You see what I'm saying? But read on. And they asked him, what then? Mm -hmm. Or thou alive? Mm -hmm. And he said, I am not. Mm-hmm. Art thou that prophet? Mm -hmm. And he he answered, no. No, okay. God. Then he said, what? Else? Then he said, they unto them, who art thou? Mm -hmm. That that we give an answer to them that sent us. Right. What sayest thou of thyself? Right. Keep on reading. He said, I am the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. Right. Read on. My straight in the way of the Lord. Exactly. And said that the prophet said the prophet of Isaiah. Exactly. So here it is, man. John said, look, I am not the Christ. Right? 
Everybody keep asking, man, you the Christ? See, because that's what's going on today. Everybody's looking for the Christ. Everybody's looking for that Christ. They're like, man, did Christ make it here yet? Did he come? Is he here yet? You see what I'm saying? Are you that prophet? Are you the Christ? Right? Are you are you Elias? Are you Elijah? Right? Are you are you uh are you are you the prophet uh what who are you? Right? See a lot of people be asking you that, man. They be like, hey, who are you? Who 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 are you? Right? Who are you supposed to be? Right? And it says, then said they unto him, who are you? That we may give an answer to them that sent us. Right? So y'all probably like, man, I got to give an answer to all these other people, man. Who are you? You see what I'm saying? That sayest do of thyself. Who do you say you are, man? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. You see what I'm saying? Because you got to understand, this is the spirit that is crying in the wilderness that's trying to get you to receive the spirit of Christ. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. Right? So you got to understand. Then read verse 24. What did he say? Verse 24. And they which were sent were of the Pharisees. Right. So the, the people that were asking, who are you? Who, who is that? Those were the brothers and sisters of the Pharisees, man. Right? They was cornerly minded. They were like, who are you? Because John was, John was going in. They were like, man, who is this brother? Are you the Christ? And they asked him, and he said unto him, Why baptize do then, if do be not the Christ, nor alive, neither the prophet? So they're asking him, man, uh, if you not the Christ, then why are you baptizing us? Right? You know, if you're not, if you're not the prophet, then why are you baptizing us? John answered him saying, I baptize with water. Woo. And we already know what that water is because we just went to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26, and we already know what that water is. And so let me get that for you real quick because if you don't know what water is yet and you still dunking your head in water, then you are way off. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? If you still dunking your head in that water, you in idolatry and you in witchcraft. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26, it says that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of of water by the word. So that's how you get baptized. Right now, how I'm doing right now, how I'm talking to you, how I'm preaching to you, the word, the word, the word of God, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. Let me put that in the comments. Ephesians chapter 5. In verse 26, and you can go look at that if you want to go look at that, right? You can go look at that KJV. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26, it says that he may sanctify and cleanse you and baptize you by the washing of the water by the word. So that's how you get baptized, by the word of God. Like right now, if you're on this live, you're getting baptized right now. By the word of God. No, that is not considered <laughs> baptism. <laughs> she saying is praying during showers considered baptism. No, it is not. No, it is not. It is not. Praying during showers is not considered baptism. First of all, if you're praying and you are not keeping the law of Moses, then your prayers are an abomination. Your prayers don't mean anything if you're not keeping the law at all, right? And we can get that scripture as well, right? <clears throat> Your prayers are an abomination if you're not keeping the law of Moses and if you're an Israelite. So let me get that scripture for you real quick. The, wor the water is of the word is what baptizes you. So Proverbs chapter 28, verse 9. Let's get that. Proverbs chapter 28, Verse nine, and we feel to read about this prayer because uh, a lot of people think that praying is going to solve their problems and it's not. If you're not keeping the law, the most high don't even hear your prayers. Man. Right. So Proverbs chapter 28, verse nine, it says, he that turned away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. So she, I like to put she right here instead of he, she that turned away her ear from hearing the law. So if you turn your way your ear from you you, you turn your way your ear from hearing this law, 
You're not keeping the first five books of Moses. First ten, com- the first, look, just at least go look at the first ten commandments, <laughs> right? At least. And then, you know, I'll send you a website where you can go look at the 613 commandments, right? Because there's 613 of them. But really, you just need to keep two. Love your brother like yourself and love God with all your heart and all your, all your soul. Because you'll keep everything else. Uh, so you need to, uh, you know, it's really two commandments. But like I said, keep all 600. You'll, by default, keep all 613 if you're keeping the law of Christ. Uh, but once again, you need to know the 10 commandments. You need to know if you're not keeping your Sabbath because today is the Sabbath. Right. So you want to keep the, the Sabbath day. Um, today is the Sabbath uh, from 530 Friday to Saturday, 530. Right. You can't cook. You can't uh, you can't shop. You can't buy anything. Right. You can't sell anything. Um, you can't kindle a fire. Right. You can't do any of that on the Sabbath day. Right. Um, you got to pretty much just. Worship God, congregate with other brothers and sisters, read your Bible. Um, what else? Uh, just kick it, man. You know, buy you some sandwiches from uh, what's the name? Jimmy John's. <laughs> Go buy you some sandwiches from Jimmy John's and sit them boys right here and eat them sandwiches, man, and read the Bible. <laughs> That's all you can do on the Sabbath, pretty much. All right, so Proverbs 28 and 9, it says, He that turned away, or she that turned away her ear from hearing the law, even her prayers shall be an abomination. So even your prayers are an abomination if you're not keeping the law. Right? So make sure you're keeping those commandments. Because, man, I know it sucks, but that's how it goes, man. All right, so here we go. Uh, Verse 29, let's go back to Romans chapter 2 verse 29 right so it says but he is a Jew which is one inwardly and the circumcision is that of the heart of the mind right in the heart and in the spirit and not in the law not in the letter of Moses right that's not the true circumcision that is the that's one of the circumcision but that is not the true circumcision you understand that is not the that's not the fulfillment of the circumcision you see what I'm saying? If you want to fulfill the circumcision, you have to fulfill it through Christ. Right? So he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. And the circumcision is that of the heart and in the spirit and not in the letter. Whose praise is not of men. So you got to understand, your praise cannot be of men. Right? Your praise has to be of God. Right? Your praise has to be of God. Not of men. But of God, a lot of these camps, a lot of these brothers and sisters out here, they praise is of men. Oh, I'm a captain. Oh, I'm a bishop. Oh, I'm an elder. Oh, I'm a, uh, you know, I'm a chief priest. You see what I'm saying? Right. Oh, I've done all these wonderful works. You see what I'm saying? On the street. I've done all these wonderful works on the street, right? I built a large congregation, but that does not mean that you're, that, that, that you are a inward Jew. That does not mean that you're circumcised in the heart. That does not mean that your confirmation has came from God. It might've came from you, but it's not from God. And that's the problem, man. So let's get Romans chapter 3, verse 1. This is the book of Romans, chapter 3, and verse 1. What advantage then had the Jew? Or what profit is a circumcision? What advantage of the of that then what advantage then had the Jew? What advantage do you really have to? What what advantage do you really have as a, as a Jew? Right? And what profit is there of circumcision? What does it really profit you of the circumcision of Moses? Right? What does it really profit you? Right? Read on. Verse verse 2. This is the book of Romans, chapter 3 and verse 2. Much everyone, much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. 
Exactly. Or what profit is there of the circumcision, right? Much every way. Chiefly because that unto them which were committed un the uncommitted the oracles of God. But read on verse, verse 3. For what if some did not believe? So what if some did not believe? What if some did not believe in the, uh, the, 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 the oracles of God, right? What if some did not believe? Read on. Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Shall their, the people that don't believe, shall the faith of God make their, shall their faith of God, uh, you know, shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Shall that make their faith of God without effect? Right? Because they don't believe? Absolutely. I'm going to answer that question for you. If you don't, if, 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 right? If you do not believe, right? If you in unbelief of the oracles of God, right? Then, you, then, then you're not really walking in the spirit. You see what I'm saying? The belief is more important. Because you got to understand, just because you're keeping the law don't mean you have the belief. It doesn't mean you have the belief of God. For what if some did not believe, right? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Uh, it's not going to make the faith of God without effect. Right? It's not gonna, it's not gonna, it's not, cause, you know, God don't change. Right, his glory still. But it says, alright, verse 4, what do you say? Verse 4, God forbid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let God be true, mm -hmm. and every man a liar. See, and let God be true. Cause God gonna be true all the time. But every man a liar. Read on. As it is written. That thou mayest be justified in thy sins, and that my mightest overcome when thou art judged. See, that way, you know, if you let God be true and every man a liar, if you believe in God over man, Ooh. then you're going to be justified in your sins. But see, a lot of people, they're not justified in what they say. Because they always, they're not, they don't believe in God. They really unbelievers. You can be in the truth, keeping the law of Moses, and still be an unbeliever of God. Bring it up. I don't think that went over their head. I don't think they. I don't think they understood what I just said. You can keep the law of Moses and still be an unbeliever of God. Whew. Put a one in the comments if you understand that. You can keep the law of Moses and still be an unbeliever of God. Verse 4 says, God forbid. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. As it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy saints and mightest overcome when thou art judged. See, when you have the spirit of Christ, you're going to be able to overcome when you are judged. Right? But a lot of these men, these corner Israelites, they're they not gonna be able to overcome in their sins, man. Because you're gonna be you're gonna find out that a lot of these brothers are lying. Mm. You're gonna find out that a lot of these brothers are lying, man, and they ain't gonna be able to overcome that lie. They're not gonna be able to overcome all these lies that they got brought that they put out there. You see what I'm saying? They're not gonna be able to overcome these chariots flying in the sky. They out here pushing chariots into the people, to the to their people, to their congregation. <laughs> See, you're not going to be able to overcome that lie because you're not, you, you're not letting God be true. You're not, you hold the truth in unrighteousness. Right? You hold the truth in unrighteousness. They holding the truth in unrighteousness. They are here teaching people chariots. But if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous who take it vengeance? Right? So it's saying, but if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God. So if your unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God. Right? What shall we say? Right? 
It says, is God unrighteous who take it vengeance? Is God unrighteous if he take vengeance on you? Is he unrighteous if he take vengeance on you? He said, I speak as a man. Because you got to understand, but if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God, what do you think that means? If our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God, right? What shall we say? Right? Because the problem is, is that a lot of people, man, their righteousness is not exceeding the righteousness of God. It's not exceeding the righteousness of the law of Moses. You see what I'm saying? It's not exceeding that. It's not exceeding the righteousness of the law of Moses. Right? And we can get that scripture, right? We can get the scripture on how these Cornel Israelites, it says what? Christ, what did Christ say about being exceeding the law of Moses, right? What did he say about that? Right? Let's get the scripture on that. Because you got to understand. Shall your righteousness commend, right? Exceed, right? It says, but our unrighteousness commend the, the righteousness of God. Your unrighteousness does not commend the righteousness of God. Right? Is God unrighteous who take it to vengeance? So read, read that. What did it say? Verse, verse, verse 6. What did it say? God forbid. Mm -hmm. For then shall, for then how shall God judge the world? How can God judge the world? I think it's in like, are you exempt from God's judgment? Based on your own righteousness, are you exactly holding yourself accountable? Yeah, accountable. Are you being a hypocrite essentially? You know, like right. So God forbid, right? God saying, Nah, God forbid, man. Your unrighteousness can man. Can your you know? It says what is God unrighteousness? Who is he unrighteous for taking vengeance upon your unrighteousness? Me. God forbid. Then for then, how should God judge the world? You see what I'm saying? How can he judge the world if your righteousness is not, you see what I'm saying, exceeding his righteousness Ooh. or the, the level of righteousness that he expects from you? You see what I'm saying? So you got to, he expect a certain level of righteousness that you should be, be, you know, applicable to you. It's a level of righteousness that he's looking for. And a lot of people aren't being that being that level of righteousness that he wants. It's kind of like going to the to the to the to the to the job, right? When you need a job, you go to high school, you get a diploma. You go to college, you get a you get a uh, you get your you get your bachelor's degree. Then you get your master's, then you get your PhD. Right? So the white man is expecting a certain level of righteousness from you. Me. Right? And should the white man take vengeance if you're not exceeding that? If you're not, if you're not meeting those expectations? Uh, you know, the, well, he's judging the world based on whether or not what? The white man is judging the world based on whether or not you go to school. Whether or not you finish your college degree. So he's going to say, look, you poor. You, you in the poor class and everybody else that finished, they got their bachelor's degrees. They in, the, they in the rich class. You see what I'm saying? They judging you. So why isn't God able to judge you as well? In the spirit. Right? You're trying to achieve. You're trying to. Exactly. You're trying to. You're trying to achieve a certain level of righteousness in the physical realm, right? With the white man, right? So why aren't you trying to achieve a certain level of righteousness with God? Does that make sense? So for then, how should God judge the world? He has to judge the world based on your level of righteousness. And the level of righteousness that's just based on the law of Moses is not the level of righteousness that he wants you to have. He expects more from you. More. 
The level of righteousness just based on the law of Moses is not enough. Right? You have to you have to receive the spirit of Christ. Because that righteousness is enough. That righteousness is fulfilling to God. Does that make sense? Put a one in the comments if that makes sense. If that don't make sense, I can explain it to you in a little bit. Right? Put it in the comments if you don't understand that. Right? And I'm going to expound on it a little bit more just so you can get a full understanding. Let's get Matthew chapter 5, verse 20. Matthew chapter 5, verse 20. Right? Let's get it. Because that's going to expound on this righteousness. We need a level of righteousness. We need a a certain expectation from our people. Mm -hmm. That's why so much division in our in our in our communities because there are all these people on these different levels of righteousness. It says, "Teach me, and I will hold my tongue, and cause me to understand wherein I have erred." Exactly, man. Because you know, uh, a lot of people are er erring, right? They're erring in the in the spirit. Just because you're keeping the law of Moses don't mean that you're keeping the law of Christ. Which, again, the law of Christ is invisible. That's something you can't see, right? So let's get Matthew chapter 5, verse 20. Let's expound on this righteousness, the level of righteousness that you're supposed to have and that is acceptable unto God. Read verse uh, Matthew chapter 5. Verse 20 real quick and we're going to because that's going to kind of give you an explanation on the level of righteousness that you're supposed to have. This is the book of Matthew chapter five and verse 20. Mm -hmm. Read on. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. Ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you, right? Same thing I'm saying, same thing Christ saying, look. Same thing Yahweh was saying. There is a level of expectation from God. There is a level of expectation from Christ. Mm -hmm. There is a new level. It's not, you see, Moses was one level. Christ is another level. And Yahweh is another level. There's levels. There's levels to this truth, Right? For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed, meaning exceed carnality, the law of Moses, the law of condemnation, the law of bondage, that except your righteousness, because a lot of people are righteous based on the law, but not based on the spirit. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of God, into the kingdom of heaven. Put a one in the comments if you understand it. Because what for I say unto you that except your righteousness exceed the carnality that's in you, exceed the flesh, the fleshly mind that's in you. If you except you cut that flesh off of you, off of your flesh, right? And except you cut the flesh off of your heart then you will not exceed the law of, you will not, you will not exceed the, 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 the righteousness of the, the scribe and Pharisees. You're not going to exceed it. You have to exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. Man. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense. Put a one in the comments if that makes sense. You have to exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. But if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? We're going back to Romans chapter 3, verse 6. God forbid, then how shall God judge the world? Right? So you have to walk in the spirit. Pretty much. You have to. You can't be walking in the flesh. You can't just be walking in the law of Moses. You have to walk in the spirit of Christ. You have to walk after the spirit. 
But if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous that who take vengeance? God forbid. For then how shall the ju God judge the world? Mm -hmm. For if the truth of God had more abounded through my lie unto his glory, why yet am I also judged as a sinner? Whew. Right? So for if the truth of God had more abounded through my life unto his glory, why yet am I also judged a sinner? Right? Because look, you got to understand a lot of people are still judged a sinner because their righteousness has not had more abounded through the, through uh his glory, right? You you still has not reached the level of expectation that God wants to have, that that God wants from you, right? Again, your righteousness has to exceed the scribes and Pharisees, and not rather as we be slanderous reported in uh, as some affirm that we say, let us do evil that good may come, whose damnation is just, right? What then are we better than they? No, in no wise. See, we're not better than them. No, for it, we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin, right? So we all under sin. We all are under sin, both the Jews and the Gentiles. We're all under this sin, right? But so we all, so we can't judge each other based on sin. I'm going to say that again. We can't judge each other based on sin. So how do we really judge each other? How do we really judge each other? Because remember, the sin is the law. We can't judge each other just based on the sin, right? Just on our sins, because we all are sin, sinful. You see what I'm saying? Let's get verse, verse, verse 10. It says, as it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. Exactly. According to the law of Moses, man, ain't nobody righteous, bro. According to the law of Moses, everybody was unrighteous. Not one person was righteous. Right? But let's get 11. It says, there is none that understand it. There is none that seek it after God. See, there is none that really seek it after God for real. Right? Because if you keep it just the law of Moses, you're not really seeking after God. You see what I'm saying? They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that do it good. No, not one. Man, everybody that was keeping the law of Moses, there was none that had did good, man. Not one of them, man. Their throat is an open scepter. With their tongues, they have used deceit. Man, they was using deceit with their tongues. Right? Spe speaking those smooth words, right? The poison of ass and under their lips, man. They had poison under their lips, man. Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. See, a lot of them had cursing and bitterness in their heart and, they, and everything. Their feet are swift to shed blood. They had no mercy on, on brothers and sisters. They didn't have no mercy on brothers. All the brothers and sisters that was keeping the law of Moses didn't have no mercy on their brothers and sisters, man. They was quick. To, they were swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, man. In the way of peace, have they not known? They didn't know. They haven't known the way of peace. You see what I'm saying? There is no fear of God before their eyes. See, just because you keep the law of Moses don't mean that you have the fear of God before your eyes, man. Doesn't mean you really, you really have the fear of God. Now, we know that what things soever the law say it, it said to them who are under the law. See, we know the things that whatsoever the law say, they, it said to them who are under the law, right? That every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God, right? So all the, all the people in the world are going to become guilty before God under the law, right? Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. See, no flesh going to be justified by, 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 by the law in his sight, man, by, by, by the law in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. See, by the law is the knowledge of sin. By the law is the knowledge of sin mm -hmm. in death. By the, law, the, by the law is the knowledge of sin in death. In condemnation. In judging. 
Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law, there is the knowledge of sin. Everybody know, like, you keeping the law, man, it's the knowledge of sin. It's like, bro, if you ain't keeping the law, you ain't sin. But now, but now, follow me here. But now, the righteousness of God without the law is manifest. See, we learning now that the knowledge of God, the knowledge of God, the righteousness of God is now being made manifest without the law. Because the law was all about sin and death, sin and death, condemnation, sin and death. But now, it, that's not the righteousness anymore. But now the law, it, the, 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 the law is the law of Christ, right? But now the righteousness of God without the law is made manifest. Right? Now we know what the righteousness should look like. Without the law. The law was just an example of how you're supposed to live without the law. Right? And how you're supposed to live with the law. Right? Because you got to understand, of course, we'll never stop keeping the law. But here's the thing. You should know the righteousness of God because that exceeds the law. That exceeds the law. Creator, not the you gotta worship the creator, not the creation. You see what I'm saying? Now we know that with what things soever that the law said, it said to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law is made manifest. Being witnessed by the law in the prophets. So the prophets are now seeing that it's not just based on the law of Moses anymore. The right, your righteousness is not just based on the law of Moses anymore. Your righteousness is actually now based on the law of Christ. Right? But now the righteousness of God without the law is made manifest by the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Christ unto all and upon all that of them that believe. Me. For there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have come short of the glory of the law. The glory of the law. Because remember, the glory was of the law at, the time, at this time during Moses' time. That glory was of, of, of God, of, 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 it was of, that was the glory before. That was the glory before. But that's no longer the glory. See, the law of Moses was a, it was just a, it was a precursor for the true law. The law of the spirit. The law of the, the, the law of the spirit, it, it fulfills the law of Moses. You see what I'm saying? The law of the heart, the law of the mind, the law of the spirit. It fulfills the law of Moses. It fulfills the law of Moses. Right? Because we all came short and have sinned uh, and come short of the glory of God during the time of Moses. Amen. And now, even today, we're still uh, coming short of the glory of God. Even today, we have still came short of the glory of God. Even today, trying to keep the law of Moses. Because we're still not understanding the law of Christ. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ. See, we are justified by the law of Christ. Because look, freely by his grace, Christ gave us that grace. He died for us through his redemption that is in Christ. That's how we are able now to be justified, justified through our sins that we committed under the law of Moses. That's how now we are justified by the law through Christ. Whom has set forth to be what? Appropriation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remissions of sins that are past. 
through the forbearance of God. So the Most High gave us uh, forgiveness through Christ. And now we are supposed to do what? We're supposed to glorify Christ. To declare, I say, at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the, justi the justifier of him which believeth in Christ. That's how you're going to be justified, by Christ. You're going to be justified by Christ and Moses. Where is boasting then? See, where can you boast then? Where can you boast then now? See, you can boast of the law of Moses. A lot of people boast of the law of Moses, right? But where is your boasting now when we're talking about Christ? Can't nowhere to be found. See, nobody boasting about Christ. Everybody boasting about that law of Moses. But ain't nobody boasting about Christ. Pharisees. It's them Pharisees. They not boasting about Christ. You notice these Pharisees, they don't boast about Christ. They always boasting about Moses. You can't boast when it comes to Christ. Because they don't know what it, they don't understand it. Ooh, they hate that. Man, they hate that. They hate that one, man. They hate that. Where is your boasting then? See, you can boast in the law. Oh, I'm keeping the law better than anybody. Mm -hmm. We got my friends on. I got on. my friends on. Got my, I'm keeping the Sabbath better than you. Man, where your boasting at now when it comes to Christ? Christian. <laughs> you can't do it. See, they can't boast. But the ones that's in the spirit, we can't. But guess what? The one that's not, they can't boast. And the guy got it that way for a reason. Because they was boasting all the time. They were getting ready to kill Christ. They crucified Christ. You see what I'm saying? But they can't boast now because now they can't understand Christ. You see what I'm saying? So they always boasting about Moses. Moses, Moses, keep the law, keep the law, keep the law. You hear all these brothers on YouTube and Facebook and all these brothers on Instagram. All they do is boast about how the Christians ain't keeping the law. How the Edomites aren't keeping the law. <laughs> because all they know is the law of Moses. That's an old song. We not on that no more. We on a new song. We boasting about Christ. We no longer boasting about Moses. Moses was the first glory. We're not worried about the first glory no more. We're worried about the second glory. The glory of Christ. Because if your righteousness does not exceed the scribes and Pharisees, the ones that's keeping the law of Moses, and always telling everybody to keep the commandments, keep the commandments, keep the commandments, keep the commandments but they're not even keeping it themselves. Where is your boasting then? Is it excluded now? Is it excluded? See? They boasting. They can't boast, man. Mm -hmm. By what law can you boast about Christ? By what law can you boast about Christ? You can't because you know you're breaking them all. Lust. Fornication. Adultery. Hatred. Wrath. Malignity. Variance. Contention. See? You can't, you can't keep that. You can keep that law, but you can't keep that heart. See what I'm saying? Is it excluded? By what law? Of what works? Nay. But by the law of faith. See, you have to keep the law now by the law of faith. Most people don't have the law of faith, man. You see what I'm saying? Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith. You are now being justified by faith. You're no longer being justified just by the law of Moses. Moses, you are being justified by faith without the deeds of the law. You are being justified without the deeds of the law, without the works of the law. You are being justified now by faith. Man, put a one in the comments if you understand what I'm talking about. You got to be justified now by faith. It's no longer you're justified by the works of the law. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith. Without the deeds of the law, without the works of the law, man, you are justified now by faith. Because you're going to keep the law all day long, but if you're not keeping the faith in Christ, then you're not keeping the law. You're not justified. Is he the God of the Jews only? 
Is Christ the Jew, the God of the Jews only? Is is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. See, this law, Christ is of the Gentiles and the Jews. See, back then it was just about the Jews, 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 Jews. But now it's about the Jews and the Gentiles. Mm. Right? Is it not also of the Gentiles? Yes, he's also of the Gentiles. Because you got to understand, this is God we're talking about. It's not the Gentiles. Created all, right? God created all the nations. Black, white, Puerto Rican, Mexican, everybody. Chinese. See, because when we were just keeping the law, it was always just about the Israelites. But now, because that was according to man. But now you got to understand that you got to understand that the spirit of Christ, right? The God, Yahweh, in the Son, is a God of the Jews and the Gentiles. The spirit is, a, the, is the God of the Jews and the Gentiles. Seeing it is one God, which shall justify the circumcision by faith. Your circumcision is now being justified by faith and uncircumcision through faith. So your uncir even your uncircumcision is justified through faith. So your circumcision in your uncircumcision is justified through faith. So we shall justify the circumcision by faith in the uncircumcision through faith. Notice it says through faith. The uncircumcision is through faith. Do we then make void the law through faith? Do we make, do we make void the law of Moses do, through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. Mm. So we don't make void the law through faith. God forbid. We establish the law through faith. You see what I'm saying? We establish the law through faith. So. That's it on that. Uh, this this uh, Shabbat today. This class today. Um, thank you guys for just joining. The few men that just joined. Um, but yeah, we are pretty much, you are no longer justified just by the law of Moses. You are justified by the law of Christ. And the law of Christ is more glorious than the law of Moses. Because that's based on the spirit. The law of Moses is based on the flesh. So we're no longer justified just by the law of Moses. We are justified by the law of Moses and the law of Christ. Mm. Peace be with you guys. Shabbat Shalom.